Oh, hi there, my name's Beth, and this is the story of how I renovated my 1904 Dutch sailing barge. This week, we're back into the yard for the final time. Let's see. Well, it's Sunday and uh, we're just about ready to move. Uh, I didn't film very, or I didn't film at all this morning because it's all been a little bit chaotic. Um, there was actually quite a bit of water in the engine room uh, after the horrendous rains and obviously the, uh, the runoff channels blocked. My bad, didn't, didn't keep it clean. Um, but anyway, so we pumped that water out and that's okay. But I do need a little bilge pump in there anyway. So, um, but without the electrics, I haven't got that. Anyway. So we've uh, ready the anchor, got a dinghy on board. Uh, that's maybe just to get off if we need to when we get to the other end. Um, and also, yeah, we've uh, we got the crew ready and everything. So, uh, so yeah, so it's a beautiful sunny day. We're going to make our way out of the uh, the basin this way, and uh, and then yeah, the water should be ready for us in about a quarter of an hour. So let's get going. So we're back in Brentford and you might see in the distance my boat uh, just tied up on the large pontoon there. So um, so it's uh, it's the uh, the Monday morning um, and uh, last night I stayed on a friend's boat and uh, and I, I think I probably slept for about 20 minutes all night and I was just worrying about, about the boat down here. I was just imagining it sinking and oh, everything. So um, so I didn't sleep very much so I've come over to check everything. So um, obviously there's, it's low tide now so we can't move anything anyway. But it, when, uh, when the tide comes up, we're gonna switch uh, Sydney, this boat alongside the large floating crane apparatus. We're gonna swap Sydney for my boat um, and then we're going to crack on. So I don't know how much we're gonna get done today because, but the high tide is around about, uh, it's 10 to four, uh, but we'll probably be able to move before then. So, um, so there may be a couple of hours in the day that uh, they can do a little bit of work, but um, hopefully it kind of kicks off in earnest tomorrow and, uh, and you know, most things get done. So the ideal situation is that, uh, that the bulk of the work gets done tomorrow and then Wednesday morning, some other bits or whatever, and I, I'm able to leave on Wednesday afternoon. Uh, I'd like to do that, um, but then we've got Thursday. So Thursday, well, I should say the final tide is on Friday, but when we were leaving the marina, we were just able to sneak out. There was just enough water to get the gates open. Um, now, if that happens on Friday and it's the final tide, then I'm stuck on the river for, for a, a, a while, which isn't, it's quite pleasant, but it's expensive. Uh, so it cost me 50 quid a night if I wanted to stay, stay on the river uh, nearby. So that's not gonna work very well. 
Um, so, um, so yeah, I'm going to, uh, we're going to try, <laughs> the plan is to leave on Thursday at the latest, but if I can get away on Wednesday, that's even ideal. So, uh, so yeah, anyway, I've, uh, I've cycled up here to, uh, to check everything and I'm going to cycle back and then I'm going to cycle back again this afternoon when we uh, come to move the boat. So, yeah. As the mast no longer has a counterweight, we also needed to cut it shorter. When this was done, it was revealed that the tree which had been used to make it was over 60 years old. So behind me, the boat is uh, it's just alongside the uh, crane now. Um, so, uh, so they're just um, doing the drawings for the final parts that need to be cut out on the CNC machine and, uh, and fabricated um, and then put on. So we just have been having a conversation about the shear legs. Uh, and uh, and I'll explain those when I've got something to point at. Um, but uh, but yeah, so well, it's uh, it's Monday now, Monday afternoon, and uh, so uh, so yeah, hopefully it's going to not take too much time. So um, so I might even be out well day or two. I'm not sure. Well, it'd be good good to be out soon. But uh, yeah, it's really exciting. It's, it's happening. It's happening. By the time I got back to the boat, the mast was already on, but we needed to try and lift it to make sure that all was well. So we just lifted the mast with the crane, you can see it's still strapped to the crane, or strapped to the crane. Um, and uh, we're just checking the rigging, which is all now a bit too short because the tabernacle has been lifted up a little bit. So uh, they're all kind of hmm, about 70 centimetres too short. So we're going to make those up with chain plates, with plates and with chains. Uh, so uh, so that'll take a tick slack, but it's great seeing the mast up. This has been, um, I don't know why I'm looking at my watch, because it's been about a year and a half or something since the mast has been up. So it's amazing, I'm really pleased. Uh, yeah, so lots to do um, still. Uh, so it's Wednesday now and uh, we're hoping, well, we kind of have to leave tomorrow, tomorrow afternoon. So, um, so yeah, it's kind of all hands on deck.
so it's the Friday and um, we've got to leave tonight because there's no more tides after today. Um, I have actually contacted a couple of people to try and work out whether I can stay other places if I get stuck out. But, um, but hopefully we should be okay. So the, uh, yeah, the work is, is continuing. They're doing some welding uh, this morning, uh, which is brilliant. Um, I'll show you all of that. Uh, I'll do a tour of that later. Quite frankly, I am exhausted. I'm so super tired. So even if I did like a tour now, it would be noisy because they're working. And also, I don't know what I'm talking about. So I'm like, uh. Anyway, uh, yeah, so we've got a few more hours and then, uh, then we'll be uh, hopefully on our way back home. So at the moment we're rigging up this uh, red line, uh, which is the thing that we're going to use to test to lift the mast up to make sure it's kind of practical. And if we can do that, then we're going to drop the boom on in the gooseneck um, and then because the mast needs to fold down on top of it. So hopefully it's going to be all okay. I can hear the winch being operated, so I'm going to have to get out of the way. So there's a couple of things I wanted to show you. Um, these are the legs which I showed you in the yard and they bolt together and form the A-frame but they rest on these crutches and, uh, and these crutches were made, uh, we designed them in the yard uh, the other night and we were the, 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 um, the guy who does all the card and design and stuff had that on the screen and I drew a little sketch of this kind of idea 
um, because we wanted to put two poles in, a leg on each side and then also a barge pole in each side as well. And then I can put a bungee around because this design yeah, it has like a, a sort of a tooth on each side to allow me to put a bungee, loop a bungee cord around and that'll hold those things in. And also it has a nice, uh, well they call them mouse holes, it has a nice mouse hole to let water and everything run through. But I actually designed it um, to look a little bit like a, a snooker cue rest, you know, with a pole coming in here. Oops, just to uh, spoil the paint. Um, and uh, But it also looks a little bit like a bridge, so I love it. So that's the uh, snooker, that's the cue rest. And then up here is uh, this thing, this wedge that comes out. Now the mast is really clever um, because you might notice that the, the angle is, uh, is it's chamfered this way, so it's angled that way, so when it drops in it has like an open angle. Um, now there could be a couple of ways we could have done that. We could have had a, a closed angle so it, when it came in it, it pushed up on a block and lifted itself up. The idea is that it doesn't sit on these pin, these, this pin but it actually sits on the bottom where this, that's all the support for the mast. So they, um, so we could have done that, but then that would have made it a little bit hard to pull the mast up the last bit. It would have had to have gone uphill a little bit. So we decided a much easier option would be to have the angle out the other way and then have a block that goes in that you push in. So that's what this is. This is big block, so it's got a pin that you can hammer out so when it goes out. And it's got these bolts, so you can tighten these bolts and it pulls the block in. And that goes in there, those three holes there. But also, it's not just a block, I think, I, I like to think it looks like a cowbell. So, more cowbell. I could have used a little more cowbell. So that's that. Also, they put in these supports here. And these, uh, these kind of gussets, if you like, just stop the, the tabernacle moving forward and aft. And that's a nice long seam weld around here now as well. So that's all stuck on really, really well. Um, that's all brilliant. And um, it also has, we, we decided to cut a few uh, little holes in because we were doing we're doing it on the big CAD table and it's a big plasma cutter controlled by the computer. So it just goes around and goes psh and cuts all the shapes out. It's incredible. But didn't get any footage of it, which I'm really disappointed of. Maybe next time. Oh, there won't be a next time, but maybe I can get some when I'm up the yard next. Anyway, those ones are put in uh, to stop the tabernacle moving forwards and aft. So, um, so that's brilliant. Um, the uh, the way that the mast is going to be uh, raised is that there will be a, a cable, uh, like a halyard, I suppose, a uh, four stay. Sorry, uh, I suppose uh, there'll be a second four stay, um, which is the cable that runs down the front from the mast to the bow. Uh, usually there is a four stay and that's this thing and this thing connects to the end of that uh, the bowsprit there but the bowsprit I always say bowsprit but it's bowsprit of course because it's from the bow anyway the bowsprit I think it's a family thing we always used to call it a bowsprit for some reason anyway um, so it gets connected onto there and then that's that's keeps that supports the mast up there and also this uh, this um, a wedge will keep the mast from from moving a bit as well however we need something to lift it with so um it's not safe to use that one i think which uh, connects to the winch uh, which i'll get to in a minute it's not really safe to use that one i don't think because you would have to disconnect it from the a-frame and then connect it to the front and then so that's a bit of an unsafe uh, kind of place to be so instead I'm going to rig up another cable which goes to the A-frame. So the A-frame will stand up like this. It'll go to the top of the A-frame and then the other side of the A-frame will go down to the winch. But a single cable down to the winch isn't enough mechanical advantage. So we're going to put a double block on each side and the yard have also uh, welded on two mounting points on the deck here. So the cable will go from that mounting point all the way up to the A-frame and round the block. Then it'll come back down round a block on this one and then it'll come all the way back up again around the block a second time on the next wheel. And then it will go down to the winch here and so you'll be able to crank it up. They've also provided me with a pole to use the brake there because the winch didn't come with a, a brake pole. So that's really nice. So I think that's it. That's a kind of rough tour of the, of the, of the stuff that we've done. Oh, no, there is one more thing, one more thing, amazing thing as well. So <clears throat> the weird thing is about where I am is that I need to take the lee boards off when I go out of the lock because the, the gap on each side of, the, of this boat, it's about five centimeters 
10 centimeters on each side and it is so narrow so you actually can't get out with the lee boards on so when the boat first came in into this basin i didn't own the boat at that time um, but they um, cut the lee boards off by cutting the pin the bolt on the end on the outside of the lee boards and stow the lee boards on deck and then they um they uh, uh well never really put them back on again well they never went back on again actually so when i bought the boat they were just stowed on on deck and they couldn't go back on because they'd been cut off so um we obviously wanted to fit them back on so um, the, the lee boards were set up, I'll still have to take them off when I go in and out of the basin, but um, I'll be able to do that with a halyard, and those are these kind of uh, ropes in a big, big few loops. Um, so I'll be able to lift them up and put them on the side. But the yard have maybe up a new mechanism to handle those, those things with, and that is this. And this is another incredible piece of engineering. So this is a, um, a, a system which, which um, hangs out the side and you can see there's a gap here for the lee board to go on and this has a bolt all the way through so you bolt it on and um, so when you put the lee boards on you would lower them down put the lee board on and put this collar and bolt on and that would hold them in place and it allows it to lift up as it would need to do when it's being used so yeah you can lift them up and down they've also put some grease nipples on here um, to keep this greased so i can uh, keep on putting some grease in there and they also put this extra piece on here to fold it up and put it on deck and also an extra hole to just hold it hold it back again so these are these are amazing uh, amazing piece oh there's one more thing um, to avoid this pin rotating it actually has a washer with it with a little side on with a flat edge so that doesn't rotate around so it's only this that rotates so it doesn't rotate in this collar so again that's another amazing amazing piece of equipment um, I think oh well there's one really small small thing now um, that when the, the the mast is slightly higher up now and I know exactly how much higher because if you remember back in the day we cut off this this tabernacle uh, we cut that off and we put the move lifted the, the, the roof up and then we put the tabernacle back on now the tabernacle is not connected to the roof itself it's actually connected to the support below and that's this big sort of eye-shaped box section beam that goes all the way down to the uh, cabin sole to the bottom of the hull uh, or past the cabin sole actually to the to the hull um, so that's uh, that's actually takes all that weight now it is welded to the to this to the roof but not in a direct way in a way that can move and flex so it's the, the weight of the mast isn't on the roof it's on the support below and it is a very clever piece of engineering from MSO very clever indeed all of it's clever
So it's been a really exhausting week, but it's fantastic that we've got all these things done. So uh, yeah, we uh, we skipped a week last week for videos because I wanted to show you all of this and uh, and hopefully it's made up for it because we've actually got a huge amount done. Um, it kind of really feels like I'm on the final straight now. There's so much work more to do, but I really feel that, that we're kind of making progress. And sometimes it's hard to see that progress when you're right in the middle of things. And, uh, and you know, I was kind of worrying when winter was coming and all of this kind of stuff, but this is a huge weight off my mind because we've got the mask back on. So um, I only need to leave the marina now for social trips, which is absolutely amazing. Uh, I'm really pleased with that. It's great. So, um, so yeah. So the things that I need to do now, uh, just to kind of finish off the the, um, the exterior, is to get a bit more paint um, on the uh, on the new metalwork, just to kind of get that ready and stable for winter. Uh, I want to get a load of um, of uh, some sort of varnish on the mast, just to kind of give it a bit more protection through the winter as well. Uh, if you remember back uh, months ago, I uh, I went into the yard in that video, and I knocked all of the uh, the old flaky um, varnish off the mast. Uh, but so it's kind of sat there since then, which isn't great, but um, you know, it, things are what they are. Um, so I want to get a bunch of varnish on that. Um, I do need to get a few more things. I need to get some cable and I need to get the two pulleys, the two pulley blocks uh, to uh, to actually lift the mast. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so I can do that in slow time now. And to be honest, the last few days I've taken it really easy because I was just absolutely exhausted after the, uh, the, the week. Um, and uh, I wasn't really sleeping very well, worrying about the boat. Oh, she's gonna sink, she's gonna, she's gonna vanish, someone's gonna steal her, oh, I don't know. Uh, and all of that kind of stuff that, you know, you, that uh, arrives at three in the morning um, when you're trying to get to sleep. Anyway, all's well that ends well, of course. And, um, and yeah, it's been a really successful full week. So I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you're doing well. And next time we'll just carry on with more of the jobs. I'll see you then.